Welcome to the Shoot This Now podcast. My name is Tim Malloy. My name is Matt Donnelly. Every week on Shoot This Now, we talk about stories that should be made into TV shows and movies. This week, we talk to a guy who's kind of an expert on making TV shows and movies. An awesome oh guest. Oh my god. Fantastic guest. Peter Gould. He created Better Call Saul. Is he related to Elliot Gould? No. Sorry. Uh, but Better Call Saul is related to Breaking Bad. Interesting. We talk about both of those shows. Mm-hmm. Which are pretty much my favorite shows. I know. And also, Tim's not alone. They are well awards nominated and winning and and long running and prestigious. If you are a fan of the Saul universe, you're going to love this. We're going to get really nerdy. It's where Walter White gets the Infinity Gauntlet Mm -hmm. and snaps his fingers and everyone gets mad. Yeah, that's what the show's about. That's Mm -hmm. the Saul universe. Am I right? Am I right? You nailed it. Yeah, I can't believe you've never seen the show. If you just like writing and hearing how a great writer works, you'll enjoy that. Mm -hmm. He also tells us about a movie he really wanted to make about the Clinton Lewinsky situation right after it happened uh, that would have involved shadow puppets. And it's not too late to make it. (laughs) It You gotta love that timely script. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds amazing, to be quite honest. Um, That's only one of the great ideas he has. We also have a very wide-ranging conversation that also involves Brian De Palma, that involves... My God, just listen to this thing. You're going to like it. Thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure. I've heard rumors of the normalness of your office, and it is so normal. (laughs) Like, well, what would you, what would you picture? I would picture something in like a scary neighborhood where you guys come up with really diabolical ideas. Um, some sort of something that looks like the Westward Ho, like the apartment, <laughs> like the uh, hotel complex that you destroy in the last episode. I, I, I will. I will say. Uh, I think our Breaking Bad office was more similar to uh, the Westward Ho or, or the Crystal <laughs> Palace on Breaking Bad. It had a lot. It had a lot in common with with those places and. Uh, uh, we're, we, we enjoyed it. It was great for the, for the years we were there. And now we like having, uh, having air conditioning and, and, <laughs> uh, and an elevator and all, all that good stuff. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the most, to me, the most gorgeous thing in this, I, I well, now I was going to send it sincere, but not, it's not is the, uh, the fan art is we're oh. sitting here, we're sitting here right now in, in the, in the, uh, in the room where we do our teleconferences with Albuquerque and to cheer us up, we have uh, fan art all over the walls, and it's it's uh, it's something. It's, there's a constant renewing display of, of fan art for Better Call Saul, and we uh, and it just it means the world to us. It's amazing to me that people out there are drawing our characters. So I mean, it, always, it always makes me happy. So whenever you're in a spot and you're just like, I don't know how we're going to finish this episode, you've got all of this reassurance from fans saying we love what you're doing. Oh. Well, maybe. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the other way to look at it is people are watching, and we better we better not let them down. Oh, I don't okay. know. It could we could go, it could go either way. <laughs> I can twist it around to make myself feel bad, no matter what. You shouldn't. I am a real life fan, thank sitting you. across from you, saying that I love what you do and oh. really, really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask something that we um, wrote about in the rap that got a little bit of a a stir going. You mentioned that. Walter White might still be alive during the Cinnabon period of Jimmy McGill's life. It, it, well, I'm just, I, we have, you haven't ruled it out. We haven't ruled it out. And if you watch the show carefully um, and you, you have a calendar at hand and you've taken notes, uh, you remember that uh, in the penultimate episode of uh, Breaking Bad, Walt and Saul both get whisked off by the disappearer. Walt, we know, goes to New Hampshire. He's in New Hampshire a long time. I'm yeah. forgetting how long it is, but it's at least, I think it's got to be like eight, six, eight months. Yeah. Um, so we don't, but when we see it, now we've, we're seeing Gene, uh, the character who used to be Saul Goodman in Omaha, it feels like, and I'll give you this, it feels like he's been there for a long time. Yeah. But there's nothing to say for sure that he hasn't been there for four or five months when we see him when we see him on Better Call Saul. So yeah. it's uh, we're just leaving the door open. Let's put it that way. What would that mean to you if 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 let's say let's say Saul Saul Goodman, Jimmy McGill, Gene is there in Omaha 
and Walter White is still alive. What, is, what does that mean in your mind? I know that you all have been trying to think of a way to get Cranston back for at least a cameo or something. Uh-huh, yeah. And it doesn't super satisfy me to have like, you know, the guy who's still a chemistry teacher bumping into Saul at the supermarket. Gotcha. Like it's cool, but it, how would it move things along? Right. I would be actually pretty psyched if he somehow ended up in Omaha. And I'm such a dork about this. I read a lot of the theories and I understand that they parted ways in March of that year. Which yeah. I think was 2010. If you say and, so. And then someone figured out Walt's birthday is in September. Right. And that he dies soon after his birthday. Right. Which means that um, he's still alive until September of that year. So right. Okay. Uh, then, maybe. Then they figured that it's snowing in Omaha mm-hmm. when we see Gene. Mm-hmm. Um, and people like tweeted me almanacs showing that there is no snow in Omaha in September. Mm-hmm. To which I say... But there is snow in Omaha in March and in April, mm-hmm. um, potentially. And also, do they have to follow the actual weather patterns of real life Omaha in that year? I don't. I think you get to take poetic license. But it, all right, well, you, you know, I, <laughs> I, 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 let me put it this way: uh, if if we haven't said it on the show, if it's if it works in the uh, the universe of the story, I think all bets are off. Yeah. Uh, and you're you're absolutely. Right. I'd love to see Brian Cranston again. Uh, uh, as, as Walter White, um, I, I think he liked to do it, but we have to we have to come up with something that's worthwhile. I I, I find it hard to picture actually that the um, I wrote and direct. I was lucky enough to write and direct that penultimate episode, the yeah. Granite State episode. It's hard for me to picture Walt during the course of that episode leaving New Hampshire and going anywhere. Um, is that is that is that what you're pitching here? Oh boy. Pitching is too strong a word. <laughs> is that uh, what you're hypothesizing? But uh, he does travel from New Hampshire back to Albuquerque, That's and true. Omaha is kind of on the way. Okay, all right, all right. It's not impossible. I got, I, I got you. That's, you know what? All right. That's that's, that's an interesting thought. I mean, that's. I, you know, we're going to open the writer's room again in a few weeks, and, and I can tell you for sure this this will be broached. <laughs> Do people come up to you like? At the coffee place and wherever else, and say, "Here's how you should do it." No, you know, it, it's. I'll tell you, they don't, and, and and I think it's very satisfying that they don't because, yeah. um, I I think my hope on for the show was that it would live on its own and stand on its own two feet, and it wouldn't be that we wouldn't be just drifting off the work uh, that we did on Breaking Bad that Vince did, of course, Vince did on Breaking Bad that we this show wouldn't be. Um, just you know, building on you know, just calling back constantly, and you yeah. know, I guess what they they call fan service. Yeah. Um, and so I, people are the thing that people ask me about when I'm in a coffee shop is what what's going to happen to Kim Wexler? Oh, that's yeah. what's that's what's really worrying to people. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. what's going to happen to Kim? And uh, that is very satisfying to me because she's a character who we never saw on, on Breaking Bad, and so it, it proved to me that. This show is is people are invested in this show and they're invested in this show not just yeah. because of Breaking Bad but because of what this show is is on its own and that's that's really satisfying. Yeah, I was going to say that her and Nacho have both just completely established themselves so fully and they're so alive. It's they really stand on their own without any kind of you know touch back to Breaking Bad at all. And that's yeah, you know, such a tribute to uh, Michael Mando and Ray Seahorn. They're just. Both really remarkable performers and, and, and both really fun to work with. Yeah. Have you, it, my sort of theory has been, I feel like I'm like, first of all, let me just caveat. Okay. I think every fan of the show has figured out that whatever we think of is not going to be as cool as what you all are going to come up with. Um, so like coming up with fan theories and yeah. all that sort of stuff is kind of pointless, but it seems like it seems unlikely to me that you would go longer with Saul than Breaking Bad. Yeah, I, boy, that's a good good question. I I don't we don't know at yeah. this point. You know, and, you know. Of course, there's what we want to do. What what our what our choice is, and what our, what we want to do is to end this and and hopefully have it work. Boy, I mean, it's, I'm reaching for the stars, but we're trying to have it land. And be satisfying, mm-hmm. and and that that's one. Of, that's what I think 
uh, we did on Breaking Bad. Uh, that's what Vince, Vince led us to do on Breaking Bad. Uh, and I'd love to stick the landing on this. Uh, and however many episodes it takes to do that, that's the right number of episodes. Yeah. Having said that, there's always, you know, there's always a business side to this business. And if people aren't watching the show, of course, you know, we're not, <laughs> we're going to have to stop. Fortunately, it seems like people are watching enough to keep us going. But oh, that's, yeah. you know, that's, uh, it's some, I got to say, it's not something I take for granted. Uh, you know, we're only here because of the support of, of the viewers, the fans and, and AMC and Sony, uh, that they, they've, and believe me, it's a special kind of marriage between yeah. us and those companies because they, you know, it's, it's like getting married when you're poor. Uh, you know, when, when, when things go better, uh, you, you know, you know that you're together for good reasons about the oh, relationship. Wow. And, and they, they really did stick with, uh, especially Breaking Bad, you know, when really no one was watching. I mean, people forget no one was watching. It was mm. really, uh, I thought the first season of Breaking Bad I thought it was so spectacular. Yeah. I was so into it. And I just, I never met anybody who watched it. <laughs> I, you know, it's, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be so excited to tell people what I was working on, and they, no one had ever heard of it. And so it was, it was so uh, <laughs> rewarding as the years went on to have people get more excited about the show <laughs> and about the characters. And I remember I was working at TV Guide, and we got all these different discs sent to us, and I would just pop them in at random, and oh. it would be like, Oh, leverage this new show on TNT. Oh. This is nice. This is pretty good. And then Breaking Bad came across, and I was like, I like the name. It's kind of cool. And watched it and was just like, oh, yeah, that's the best pilot I've ever seen. <laughs> I hope this keeps going somewhere. And I was totally late. I was like probably a season late before getting into it. But my God, once I got into it, the once you saw the Pink Rabbit, it was like, I'm all in. It, it, it's a great pilot. It really is a spectacular pilot, but it does not do the thing that they always told you in the in old days, the old days the pilots were supposed to do, which is to tell you what the show is. Hmm. Because if you watch the pilot of Breaking, as I did, I watched the pilot of Breaking Bad under um, high security <laughs> uh, up, at, up at Mark Johnson's company, Gran Via. Uh, hmm. I got to watch it, um, you know, it because it was part of the job interview to go work on the show. And I loved it. I thought it was incredible. But my f- question to Vince was, so what happens to Walter White? I mean, is what... What yeah. ha- what's episode two, three, four, five, six? Yeah. Because um, the TV shows that I was familiar with, for the most part, you know, there's a pattern to them. There's a pattern to the shows. And Vince said he's he said, and maybe he was being coy. Maybe he knew more than he was saying. But he said, you know, well, that's a really good question. I don't. I'm not <laughs> sure. And the great thing, one of the great, one of the reasons why I think that show is so special weirdly enough is that it wasn't super duper planned Mm -hmm. um in that vince trusted the process of going forward beat by beat with the characters and there was always you know the overarching idea of um you know mr chips becoming scarface yeah but he, he wasn't in a hurry you know, yeah. you, you know, there. Were, I can't tell you the number of times, especially season one, that we pitched. All right, now Walt Walt picks up a gun and he shoots Tuco in the head. Yeah, and and Walt wasn't ready to do that. That wasn't who Walt was at that point. Right. And we, one of the things I learned, especially in that first and second season of that show, was to listen to the characters and to be honest with ourselves about where the characters are. And uh, so, I mean, anyway, that's that. I, yeah. That is a long ass answer no. to what I thought was a really simple question. It's kind of amazing that you weren't sure how much story there was, and it ended up going for five seasons. And then you're doing a whole nother spinoff from that show. I, and I think you could do a third, I, a, a second spinoff. I, I, all I can say is, every episode we do, almost every time we sit down and do a mix, I sit down and go, "Okay, this is episode." The other day, I said it, episode thirty nine about the funny lawyer <laughs> the funny lawyer on breaking bad uh and so it, it it really when i step back and i think about um you know i think about that it, it just seems impossible but it, it's it's you know it's it's the weird it's the thing that i i think i, I the phrase i used before um was you know trusting the process yeah. and, and just and and that's and and by the way and we're so fortunate because we're given you know we're given the time to do the job the way we know how yeah. and so we take a we take and it's frustrating I know especially the 